standing just a moment for prayer. Blessed Lord, it's with grateful hearts that we bow in thy presence to thank thee for the faith of our fathers is living still. Instead of dungeon, flame, and sword, in spite of all of this, the great faith that was delivered to our forefathers still lives in their children, and we are so happy for that. Now we would ask you to bless us in an outstanding way tonight as we wait humbly for your blessings upon us. We commit ourselves in the service to thee. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> I'm just a bit late. I have police was calling me for an emergency at St. Louis. Brother Vale being, he wanted to let him speak a while tonight. And I leave it just immediately at the service for my home to pick up my wife and children for tomorrow to bring them back to finish up the services. And now, no doubt but what our dear beloved Brother Vale has just brought a great outstanding message. And now I would not try to add anything to what he said, but just before calling the prayer line, I would like to read just the scripture and comment a few words in order. To, I've been pretty bothered in the last two or three hours, so I would like to get the field of the Spirit on myself before we start into the service. Tomorrow night, God willing, I want to preach on the subject of the mighty conqueror, since he rent the veil in two. Now, I promised to speak on the handwriting on the wall, but I'm a bit hoarse to preach, so I just have to bypass that, I suppose, at the time. And because it's quite a lengthy 45 minute to an hour subject, if the Lord blesses in the way of teaching it. So I have not got a bad cold, it's just, I was thinking a while ago, this is eight services eight revivals since the first of the year, constantly going, hardly a day but what it's always in a meeting, preaching, sometimes two and three times a day. <clears throat> so it makes your voice a little weak. After this service, I have just a little service, a little time of rest. Easter Sunday is my birthday. and. Um, Let's see, I was born in 1909, that makes me 25 or something like that, uh, Sunday. <clears throat> so I am just a boy <laughs> in an old house. <laughs> but uh, this is the first time it's come on Easter Sunday for some time. And so I'm going to be at my little tabernacle at Jeffersonville, uh, my home, for Easter sunrise service. Then immediately after that, a baptismal service, and then the message and a healing service. Brother Neville, which I'm sure has been introduced, our pastor, sitting here in our audience tonight. Now this is what kind of fellowship we have down in Jeffersonville. Brother Neville is the Methodist preacher from Asbury College, and I'm a Baptist, so we have real good fellowship. Don't we, Brother Neville? That's right. <laughs> I'm a Baptist that received the Holy Ghost. Brother Neville is a Methodist that received the Holy Ghost. So that makes us brothers. <laughs> and we have fellowship one with another while the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. <clears throat> in the Blessed Bible tonight, in the book of Luke, we read a few verses, the second chapter beginning with the, the 25th verse. Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. 
And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child, Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the people, a light to the Gentiles and the glory to thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at these things which was spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is sent for the fall and rising again of Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. I wish to take just a few moments now just to feel the spirit of the meeting on myself of this subject, God keeps his word. There is one thing that we can surely rest upon, that is that God keeps every one of his words. He watches over them day and night to perform them. And every promise that he made is true. And that gives us such a blessed hope when we know that what we read out of the Word, God, the All-Sufficient One, will keep that Word. Not one jot or one tittle shall fail. What a perfect assurance as we read where others have taken him at his word and to see that sometimes it looks very critical. It looks like sometimes that it's going to fail, but it just don't fail. I'm thinking just now of the Hebrew children when they went into the fire of the furnace. It seemingly God was going to let them down, but he can't fail. In of our scripture, Simeon, an old sage at the temple, and those men had reputation, and those reputation was the respects of the nation. How that a man to hold the office that Simeon did must be found blameless, and he must be found mentally right. He must be found alert and learned and in a perfect spiritual condition, for the priest was blameless. And this old man, at about eighty-five years old, one day the Holy Ghost come upon him and revealed to him that he was not going to see death until he seen the Lord Christ. Now could you just imagine how the people took his testimony? An old man ready to die and yet said that he was not going to die until he saw the Christ. David looked for the Christ. Elijah looked for him. All the prophets looked for him. The kings, monarchs, potentates, and the great man of Israel all looked for this Messiah. And it seemed like he was farther away than ever. They were serving under the Roman Empire, their nation was scattered, the church was in a cold condition, and yet in the face of all this, 
That old man had a testimony that he was not going to die till he saw the Lord Christ. Could you imagine what his fellow man thought? I can just hear them say, the old man's gone off on the deep end. Or perhaps his mental conditions is failing because he's old. So we won't excommunicate him from the fellowship, but we'll just let him blow off, because we know that it's not time for the Messiah. But God has always had a remnant who was waiting on his promises, and thank God he's got them yet tonight, that wait on his promises and resting on the same assurance because it's revealed by the Holy Ghost. And as Simeon, in and out the temple, and the other young priest would say, Well, I guess the old man is just about ready to crack up. But yet he knew what he was talking about because he knew who had revealed it, and God cannot tell anything wrong. He keeps his word. So in that day there wasn't any radio or television, news press. So the only way they had to bring the message was just from lip to ear. But over in Judea, Christ had been born. After eight days, it was a custom that they would bring the male children to the temple for circumcision and also an offering for the cleansing of the mother, for her purification. The offering was either a lamb or two little turtle doves. Now the lamb was for the rich people. The turtle doves were the poor people's offering. And it come to pass, let's say about one morning on Monday morning, oh, it was busy around the temple, and there would stand a line of women all lined up with their little babies every day, for Israel ranked about two million at that time. So you can imagine how many children would be born in one day and night. So on the eighth day they had to stand in this line for purification and for circumcision to the male. And let's take now, being that we have to hurry, and imagine it's Monday morning and old Simeon, our character tonight, something told him just to sit down a little while. Oh, you know, we're going so fast, sometime we ought to sit down just a little while. We run and say a little prayer for me, Mama, and Papa, and the children. Jump up right quick, and we don't stay down there long enough for God to talk back to us. We do all the talking. And we don't give God a chance to talk. But Simeon just waited, sat down over in one of the priest's office, closed the doors, and locked himself in. And all at once I can see him reach down into the, the little holder and pick up the Scripture. You know, the Holy Spirit feeds on the Word. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's what's the matter. One of the things today that makes the church in its anemic condition is because it doesn't take time to feed on the Word. The church is hungry. If I was a doctor and a great big stout-looking man come to me and said, Sir, I'm sick, I'd say, What is your symptoms? He would say, I'm so weak I can't hardly pick my hands up. 
Well, I would say, ask him a few physical conditions. Yes, that's all right. And I'd say, well, sir, have you been eating regular? Oh, he'd say, I eat a half a cracker day before yesterday. Well, I'd say, you're just hungry. You need strength, and you need to eat. That's what's the matter with the church. Just read a scripture, one little verse, on Sunday morning. We ought to have our head in his word every minute we have to spare and take a lot of time to lay something else aside. To read that word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. And he picked up the scroll, maybe the writing of Isaiah, and he began over about nine and six. And I can see him as he begins to read, and he reads something like this, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Counselor, Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, and the Everlasting Father. And I can see the prophet as he, or the priest as he said, Oh, I wonder who he could be talking about. Remember, Simeon has the promise. And about that time out in the building, the Messiah entered the building. If God made a promise to Simeon, God's got to keep that promise to Simeon. And they line up. And I notice as they line up, there's old ladies with their little babies, the rich ladies, the little male babies with little blue needlework, little booties and little bonnets, and the little girls in their little pink, and they had little white fleecy lambs to offer, and they were chattering one with another, as just ladies can do. And way down the line, I see a strange-looking sight. A little girl, not over about 18 years old, standing with the little baby in her arms, and it doesn't have on little blue booties. It's got swaddling cloth wrapped around it. Now, if I understand what swaddling cloth is, it's what they put on the back of a yoke of an ox when they were plowing with him. And he didn't have any clothes when he was born. And who are we then? But the King of Glory had to come in such a condition as that, not in a fine hospital room, but in a stable, and no clothes to put on him, and then we complain. And here he was with the swaddling cloth. Not only that, but I can see the rich women saying, Say, don't stand near that girl. Don't have nothing to do with her. For that baby was born out of wedlock. It's an illegitimate child. Just about the same they say today about a real Christian that won't tolerate with some of their man-made religion. They say they were born out of holy wedlock. But Mary knew who that baby belonged to. She knew what the reason of that birth. 
And every born-again son and daughter of God, though you may have to be called bad names, like fanatic or holy roller or something like that, but if you were truly born of the Spirit of God, it doesn't matter what the rest of the world thinks. They might say that you might not be bright or something, but Mary knew what, who that baby belonged to, so she just didn't listen at them. Let them say what they want to. She was hitting him on the cheek with her finger as his little toothless mouth would grin. He might not be dressed like the rest of them. But, oh, God, I'd like to take his place. And there he was. You see, the true Spirit of God has never been welcomed by this world, and it never will be. It's always kind of on the downcast, like it's a little shadowy or something. Well, if the Messiah was in the temple and Simeon had the promise, then the Holy Ghost is obligated to bring Simeon to the promise. Blessed be his name. And he, all at once while he was reading in the Scripture, I can hear the Holy Spirit say, Simeon, lay your Bible away for a few minutes and follow me. There's a meeting going on. I want you to attend it. It might not be your denomination, but there's something going on. I'm going to show you something. Well, men of God are led by the Spirit of God. God leads His children by His Spirit. And when God makes a promise of a gift, God speaks to His children of such, because the the gift is to the church, and Christ was sent to the church, and Simeon had the promise, and the Holy Spirit noticed, here he comes, not knowing exactly where he was going, but he was just on his road. That's the way real Christians are led. If God said, do something, go ahead and do it. Down south one time there was a, an old darkie who really loved the Lord, and he believed all the Word. And his boss said to him one time, he said, What would happen if God said something about it? Or he said, what, what do you carry that Bible for first? He said, Boss, I believe it. said, You can't read. He said, What do you carry it for? He said, I carry it because I believe it from kibber to kibber. And he said, I believe the kibber also. He said, because it's got Holy Bible on it, somebody tells me. And I know that it can't fail for it's God's promise. He said, do you believe he'd keep all those promises? He said, I most certainly do. He said, what if God would tell you to jump through that stone wall? What would you do? He said, I'd jump. He said, how could you get to it if there's no hole in it? He said, if God told me to jump, he'd have a hole there when I got there. That's right. God keeps his promise. Simeon come out looking around through the building. He didn't know just where to go, but he was going. God made the promise. It's up to God to keep the promise. If God promised you healing, don't make any difference how you feel. Just keep moving. He'll have it just in time. He did for the Hebrew children. He does for all of his promises. Here he comes, walking through the building, not knowing where he was going. All of a sudden, 
He's seen that long string of women and that little shy, blushing girl standing there with the husband and middle aged with four other children, looking at her as she helped this baby, little grapes of swaddling cloth around him. And the Holy Spirit said, Go down there, Simeon. He didn't question the Lord. He just started walking. Why? Someone would have questioned, but remember, before time, he had been talking to the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And when the Holy Ghost comes on a man, he don't question anymore. He just goes and does what the Spirit says do. Because he knew the Scriptures was time for it to be fulfilled. So he was scripturally, and he was right in every way. And he goes down along the line until he comes to this pitiful sight. Could you imagine the Creator in the very building that he made and not even close enough to look honorable? had to take the swaddling cloth from an ox's neck. And Simeon come down just as soon as he looked into the face of this baby. He reached into that little mother's arms and took the little fella, and with tears running down his white beard, he lifted him up, and he said, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace. It's all right now. For my eyes have seen your salvation. <laughs> what was it? What everybody else is laughing at. What everybody else is making fun of. Simeon recognized it by the Holy Ghost to be God's promise. <laughs> You don't have to be blind to see that or know what I'm talking about. What the world calls foolish is God's plan of salvation to take the church to glory. Let thy servant depart in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation. And he said to Mary, he said, This child was sent to you to pierce your own heart that the thoughts of many might be known, made manifest. And notice, to you, my Jewish friends, and I have one that I just met today sitting here on the front cedar just behind Brother Kidd, Russian Jew. My heart goes to Israel, for it is a long now. Their day is a blooming, the sun's a coming up. The old six point star of David hanging over Jerusalem tonight, the oldest flag in the world, and the first time they've been a nation for 2,500 years. The fig trees are budding, Gentiles are finished. <laughs> Just about over. Oh, I would love to stay till midnight on that. The day they become a nation, the same hour they become a nation, not knowing it, the angel of the Lord was back there vindicating this ministry to me at the very same hour, not knowing it. I was at Cairo recently, going in, Jews seek signs. They said, if this be the Messiah, let me see him do the sign of his resurrection. We'll believe it. But the Holy Spirit said, not now. So I turned and went back up to Mars Hill, then on down to the Vatican. Oh, we're at the end. And notice what's taking place. He said, this is the sign. This child has been sent for the fall and the rising again of Israel. The fall 
and the rising again. And this sign will be evenly spoke of. Evil will be spoke against this sign. Notice, all the rest of them are chattering. And, Hello, Dr. Double L. D. Jones. Will you come over and have chicken with us for dinner? Oh, Rabbi Lubinsky, how are you doing? But way back over in the corner, at the other side of the temple, sat a no blind prophetess. She was 84 years old. And she was a prophetess. And she stayed in the temple and prayed. At that very instant, the Holy Ghost come on her. And here she come, blind, making her way through people that had good sight, but led by the Spirit, moving around the block, the all the dressed up and the good eyesight and moving through that. She could see more than they could see, for she was led by the Spirit. She maneuvered through the building until she got to the child, and there she offered praise to God for him. Friend, That same Holy Spirit is here tonight. There's not two Holy Ghosts, there's only one. And you've read in the Bible where that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The promise isn't to you and to your children. You've believed Him for divine healing. And that same Holy Spirit Spirit that you've trusted in all these years has led you across the country, through the snowdrifts, down through the fog, around the corners, down the streets, until finally we've come into the presence tonight of the same Holy Ghost that made the promise to share tonight to fulfill everything that He promised. Because God keeps His promise regardless. He will do a work. He'll show a sign. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you believe it? Oh, I wish we had just a little more time, but we haven't. Let us bow our heads just a moment for prayer. How many in here tonight believes that you have been divinely led to this school auditorium. The same Holy Ghost has led you here. That's good. I wonder if there's some here tonight that doesn't feel so good in your soul. You feel as though if Jesus should appear tonight, you'd feel unworthy a bit to stand in His presence and you would like for him to remember you now and forgive you of your sins, would you raise your hands? Oh, my, there's no way of counting them. Sinner friend, I wonder tonight, though you be a sinner, have never made any confession, but you truly believe before you've seen him do one thing, you believe that the Holy Spirit led you here tonight, would you raise your hands for mercy? God bless you. God bless you. You, you, you. God bless you, lady. You, lady. You. That's good. Up in the balconies to the right. Oh, God bless you around there. That's right. Eight, ten. Way up in the second balcony. Raise your hand and say, yes, God bless you, lady. God bless you back here. That's good. Balconies to the rear. Would you raise your hands? God bless you, sir. God bless you. Bless you up there. Way up in the top of the red sweater. Yes, bless you. Balconies. The second balcony to my left, God bless you, way up in there. God sees your hand. Balcony lower to the left, raise your hand. God be merciful to me, say as you raise your hand, I believe. 
I believe the Holy Spirit led me. God bless you, sir. That might have took a lot of courage to do that, sir. But it's the greatest thing you've ever done. The floors to my left, would you raise your hand to Christ? Just say, Lord, God, be merciful to me. I believe I'm divinely led here tonight by the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Floor to the right. God bless you. That's good. Now, before we make an altar call, let's call the prayer line, but let's pray first that God will bless these people. How many would like to have just a little closer fellowship with him that you could feel that the Spirit leading you like he did Simeon, and he'll bring you at last to his bosom? Would you raise your hand? Oh, just, I guess there's 2,000 or more, 3,000. Let us pray. Now just ask him in your own way. Lord God, you are our God. And we're so glad that you are the only true and living God. There is many gods in the earth today. Some of them is the God of pleasure. Some are the God of flesh. They make most any worldly pleasure a God. And there are false gods. But they neither speak or can they speak. They can't think. They can't answer. They can only be worshipped by those who walk in ignorance of the true and living God. We are privileged tonight. We who have passed from death unto life to know that our God lives. And he is not deaf, neither is he dumb. His hand is not too short for what he can reach down and give to us any little blessing that we would desire, for he keeps his promise. He's a God that can speak and a God that can answer and a God who keeps his word. Now we would ask tonight, dear God, that you would bless those who raise their hands as sinners. Some may be Oh, I would not know, Father, how to say how many, for I do not know, but you know every one of them. And maybe this is the first time that they've ever been in one of the meetings, but they are convinced right now by the Word that the Holy Spirit led them. Save them, Lord. And I pray for those who want to be so filled with your love until they will not miss the leading of the Holy Spirit when he draws them. For the days are dark, and men are running to and fro to hear the word of God, as the prophets said they would, and would fail to hear it. We're so thankful for our little crack in the storehouse of God yet. And we pray now that you'll manifest yourself in the power of your resurrection, in the presence of your church. Sanctify my heart, my soul, and my spirit, and sanctify the heart, soul, and spirit of this audience, that we together might enjoy the fellowship of the blessed Lord Jesus, and may then we with strong arms of faith embrace him and make ready for his coming, and like Simeon in the temple saying, Lord, let thy servant go now in peace, for we have seen the sign of his resurrection, and we long to see him come. Grant it, Lord, for we ask it in the name of Jesus, thy loving Son. Amen. I remember I'm on record with that. There is no medicine that says that heals your body. A medicine keeps the place clean while God heals. A doctor can remove a, a obstruction. But what about the hole that he cut in you to take it out? Who heals that? Healing is developing of cells. 
and take my word, there is no healing power in the devil. And a preacher that would say that shows he doesn't know the Bible or his God. Jesus said, Satan cannot cast out Satan. Psalms 103, 3 said, I'm the Lord who heals all of your diseases. Is that right? Satan cannot heal. If Satan can heal, he can create, and then he's a creator, then he's a god. If he's a creator, he can make himself a kingdom, make himself some people. Not to be different, but I certainly differ with Dr. Zihan, a wonderful teacher, on the serpent seed, too, thinking it, or Josephus, either, that said the sons of God pressed themselves into flesh. Maybe we can get to that before we leave. was no such thing. Satan can do that, then he's a creator. If he's a creator, he's a god. He can make himself an earth, make himself a universe. He can make himself a people, have nothing to do with God. But he has to pervert what God has created. And righteousness is unrighteousness is righteousness perverted. Billy, have you got all that I called in the line? Leo, watch him back there now. How many doesn't have a prayer card? Raise your hands and wants God to heal you. Good friend, brother and sister, kid sitting here, right here on the front seat. And also this little Jewish brother here, Joseph, that I was with this morning. And Brother Neville and Brother and Sister Woods sitting right back here about middle ways. Brother Woods was a Jehovah Witness. They had a crippled boy, legs drawn up, polio. And in the meeting, the Holy Spirit spoke back farther than what this building is long. Said the man sitting back there and told him who there was all about it. The boy's healed. He don't even know which leg he was crippled in now. Is that right, Brother and Sister Woods? Raise up your hands if that's right. We just got some great testimonies for the Lord. We just don't have time to do it. All right, now just be real reverent. Pray now. Now the next couple of moments. Jew and first an infidel and then converted sweetly to the Lord. Do you believe that to be the truth? you believe Jesus be Messiah? Sure you do. Amen. God bless you. Now, this may be your first time. Here's what I hope to go to your people with someday in Israel. For you say, Brother Branham, you see to be so sure of yourself. I am because I know he's here. Amen. And he made the promise, not me. It isn't me to keep my promise, it's him to keep his promise. Just put him to the test. Now, if the Lord Jesus will perform and do the same thing that he did in St. John, the fourth chapter, between man and woman, will you all be happy and know that Jesus is raised from the dead and he's in the Gentile congregation tonight giving his sign and wonder just before his closing to the Gentiles? Will you believe it? Not from this state, nor from this town. She come from another city, and she's from Kentucky, and the city you come from is a city called Brooksville, Kentucky. Your first name is Ella. Your last name is Todd. You are here because that you're suffering with a nervous condition. And you have a heart trouble. And you got high blood pressure because I see the doctor put something around your arm. Not only that, but I see you with a boy trying to direct him around in the house. The boy is your son, and he has a mental condition. That's thus saith the Lord God. Something here that knows you. Do you believe he has given you your request? With all your heart, then go and receive it. You can have everything you ask for if you just go believe it. How do you do, sir? We are strangers to each other, I suppose. If it is, would we just raise our hand? Now, here is a case like when Philip 
went and found Nathaniel. It's a man. If the Lord God will tell me what your trouble is, or something on that order, will you believe and accept it? Your main trouble, sir, is a nervous condition. That nervous condition has got your stomach all bothered. And it's also you've got trouble in your back and in your head. That is true. You're from a city called Hamilton, Ohio. You're Mr. Parker. That is right. Your first name's Harding, Mr. Harding pa Parker. Return home. Jesus Christ has healed you. Now be well in the name of the Lord Jesus. We are strangers to each other. The Lord God does know us both, in whose presence we are now standing. If the Lord God will reveal to me what you are here for, Will you believe him? The first, you have a nervous condition, and it's, you've got a, a growth in the neck. Besides that, see, I couldn't see it. It's under your skirt. Well, that you might know that I be the servant of the Lord. You've got heart trouble also. That is true. And you're interested in someone else you're praying for, and that's your son. And that son, you don't know what's wrong with him, neither does the doctor know. But he gets real sick spells, real sick. The doctors want to take his tonsils out. But you're a little skeptic of that because really it's a nervous spasm that's a causing it. Don't fear, you'll get over it. Go. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, may he grant it to you. We are strangers to each other. The Lord God does certainly know you. You're not from this country either. You are a Kentuckian. And you are suffering with a stomach trouble. You also have heart trouble. And you've got a thyroid gland trouble, like little tumors in the throat. Do you believe the word of the Lord? Do you believe you're standing in his presence? Then accept him as your healer and go on your road and be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. We are strangers to each other. I do not know you. You're neither from this country. You are from Michigan, and you're not here for yourself. You're here for someone else, which is a man. It's your nephew, and he's in Michigan. And he's just had an operation, and an operation was a blood clot. And the doctors operated for the blood clot, and it's almost made him helpless, and you want me to pray for him. That's thus saith the Lord. Don't doubt, he shall come out of it. Believe with all your heart. Come. Do you believe me to be his servant? I am a stranger to you. God does know you. I don't. You are suffering with a nervous condition. That nervous condition is because of an irritated female gland. That's exactly the truth. That you might know that I be the servant of the Lord, and it's not me speaking, although it be not my voice. You also, you have a son that you're concerned about. That son has had an operation. That was on the mass toy, and they're ready to operate again. Lay that handkerchief on him, and don't doubt and he will recover. Do you believe? Have faith in God. Just don't doubt if thou canst believe. What do you think sitting here on the seat here? The man looking at me there with the glasses on at the woman's passing. Do you believe me to be his servant? Do you believe that God can reveal to me what your trouble is? If we're strangers, one another, hold up your hand. All right, you can get over your arthritis now. I want the audience to look this way and believe. 
The man sitting next to you there. I see a hospital bed or something move up. By the man sitting next to you. There's a white bed. He was operated on. It was in his stomach. That's right, sir, you sitting next to him. That's your wife sitting next to you because I see you coming together. That's right. And she's suffering with a heart trouble. It's exactly right. Lay your hands over on one another there, husband and wife. Oh, Lord God, the devil thought he could get by with that. But I rebuke the devil. Come out of them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Here, right over here, here is the lady. She's praying. Can't you see that spirit, that light hanging over the woman? She's praying and she is, uh, she's got a female trouble. She's got heart trouble. She has dizzy spells. You got the wrong person there. Just a minute. Here, wait a minute. Her name is Pauline Shepherd. Rise up, Miss Shepherd, and be healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, can you doubt him? Way back on the outside row, there's a lady sitting looking at me. She has anemia condition. Do you believe, sister, the Lord God heals you of that anemia condition that you're praying about? All right, raise up your hands. That's it. Way back towards the back. That you might know just behind you is a lady suffering with intestinal trouble. You raise up. All right, the lady just beyond that is suffering way back towards the back with a stomach trouble. Raise up, lady, back there and receive your healing with the little hat on with the feather on the side of it or thing. You are healed. Jesus Christ makes you well. I challenge this audience in the lovely name of the Lord Jesus. What do you think, sitting here, young lady? You've got heart trouble and epilepsy. Do you believe the Lord God will make you well? If you do, raise up your hand. All right, you can have it, the little redhead. Believe it! What about over here? Look at this lady sitting here praying with her head down her hand up, little red jacket on. You believe me to be his prophet? you got trouble with your neck and with your jaw. It's left you now. You can go home and be well. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you? What about you in the wheelchair there? You, will you believe it? What about the rest of you? Will you believe it? Put your hands over on one another and you'll see the kingdom of God come up on you. The Holy Ghost led you here. Rise up to your feet now. Give God praise and glory. Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, send thy spirit and heal this entire group. Satan, you're licked. Cast out in the name of the Lord Jesus. 